So in Mariupol, in Azovstal, the big uh, steelworks thing there, there are supposedly, you know, maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand uh, Azov battalion men, you know, uh, Ukrainian soldiers who are trapped there. And everybody in the West is, is saying all kinds of nonsense about them. First of all, the biggest nonsense is, of course, that these men are somehow uh, carrying out uh, uh, an actual uh, resistance to the Russians. And that because of it, uh, the Russians have tens of thousands of troops still in Mariupol trying to contain this, uh, this group of, uh, you know, valiant resistance fighters. And that's a lie. Okay, it's a lie because, see... Uh, there are only a finite and relatively small number of exit, exit points from the Azovstal uh, um, complex. And so it's easy to cover them for the Russians. So they've been able to move out soldiers like crazy. They've just pulled them all out because now the whole Azovstal situation is really a police action. Okay, The outcome is inevitable. Everybody knows how it's going to turn out. Either those soldiers in Azovstal are going to come out and surrender or they're going to die of starvation and, and, and uh, lack of water. See, it's, it's inevitable, okay? But here's the, a, a, a little twist in that little story. See, it's turning out that there are civilians with the Azovstal people. Now, it's unclear at this time whether those civilians are um, family members of some of the soldiers or if they're hostages. And in doubt, undoubtedly, some of them are family members, but undoubtedly, too, some of those civilians are hostages. Then there's a story of Babushka Z. Babushka Z was this little old lady who, um, you know, very old, elderly lady. She saw some soldiers. She lives in Ukraine near the border with Russia. She saw some soldiers come out, and she thought they were Rus Russian soldiers, so she came out with her... Uh, Soviet battle flag, you know, really, you know, and, um, you know, she said that she was so happy to see them, and they were Ukrainian soldiers who were videotaping this, of course, and they took her flag, and they stepped on it, and this little old lady objected to this, and, and she pointed to the flag, and she said, you know, my parents died for that flag, and you're stepping on it. Powerful stuff, and in Russia, she's become like this huge symbol, you know, this little old lady carrying this flag, you know, and, uh, and a lot of people, a lot of young people, have gravitated to this image because she was quite brave. And, and during the video exchange, she was given food by these Ukrainian soldiers. I mean, that was the whole point of why they were videotaping her. They wanted to show how they were so nice and they were giving the poor little old lady some food. And she took the bag and just returned it. She just put it there on the ground and said, no, you know, you're stepping on my parents' flag, you know. That took a lot of courage, man. More courage than probably you or I will ever have. And, of course, because of this, she has become a huge symbol. Now, she was found by Ukrainian forces. They found out who she was once she became a symbol, of course. See? Once that video went viral and she became a symbol, and all over Russia, they started painting murals of her. For real, they have. There are all kinds of murals all over the place. And there are even like statues that people have made of her, you know, and she's become a big deal in Russia. And so Ukrainians decided that they were going to find her. And they did find her. And what they wound up doing is that they shelled the Ukrainian, the Zelensky forces, the Zelensky regime forces, shelled her home, destroyed it, and told her that the Russians had done it. And use that opportunity to get her to videotape how she was disappointed in the Russians and all kinds of things. She was manipulating the poor old lady. Mm -hmm. But there's a picture of her. I'm going to try to put it as a thumbnail to this video. If I can't, well, you can find it on my Twitter feed. There's a picture of her in a hospital bed. And she's in, a, I mean, she's sitting on the hospital bed. She seems to be fine. But she's in the hospital because she and her husband suffered these very minor injuries. And her husband is also an elderly gentleman. And they suffered very minor injuries from this destruction of their home. And so they're in this hospital and they're being interviewed by this fat piggy like man with like a scraggly beard, uh, a, a, a scraggly a brownish blonde beard. And he's got that piggy face of like really cruel bastards. You know, you know, the kind I'm talking about, you know, those guys who like smile at you, but they're real cruel, real evil bastards. You know what I'm talking about, right? Well, there's a picture. There's a picture of her, Babushka Z, her husband, 
and this man talking to them and pretending to be all nice, and next to the old man is a fourth person in the photograph. And this guy is wearing a mask, like a, like a, like a balaclava, right? Covering, and only his eyes are revealed, and below, in the mouth covering part, he has like, um, like the teeth of a skull, you know? I mean, like really scary looking. And he's this big gorilla type guy, really just huge. And he, he's sitting next to uh, um, the old man. And, and, and the guy, the, the old man is sitting here, right? And, and this big gorilla has like a thumb up, but his other hand is kind of like underneath. And you can't quite see it, but it looks as if he's holding a gun. And, you know, the old man and the old lady, they don't look particularly happy. They look kind of scared. That's the mentality of the Zelensky regime. Hostages. They take hostages and they use people's humanity and decency against them. One could argue that this entire war, the Zelensky regime has taken the Ukrainian people hostage and used them as human shields. In the Azov-style plant, those uh, quote-unquote resistance fighters, they say that they are willing to exchange 15 civilians for one ton of food. For every 15 civilians, they want a ton of food so they can continue their resistance. They're using the people as human shields, bargaining with their lives, bargaining with the lives of these civilians for some food so they can hold out longer. And, and magically be saved. They can't be saved. It's, it's over. It's over for them, right? But they are using people as human shields. I personally know people with family in Mariupol, and they told me weeks ago how Zelensky regime forces, as of battalion scumbags, were using people as human shields, and if any of these civilians tried to escape, they would get shot at their cars riddled with bullets. And I know these people, these people from before this war, okay? I had personal relationships with them that had nothing to do with this war. And so they're not gonna lie to me. They're, 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 they're telling me the truth. And this was weeks ago in Mariupol. And the people coming out of Mariupol are telling everybody far and wide, every single civilian, they will tell you the exact same thing, that the Azov Battalion the people who are holed up in the Azovstal steel plant right now, the so-called resistance fighters, were thugs using civilians as human shields. And that's the way the Zelensky regime operates. They use civilians as human shields. They have used the entire country as a human shield. The Zelensky regime is evil. Zelensky himself at best, you could say that he's an actor being puppeteered by other more powerful forces. At best. At worst, you can say he's in on this evil. He's just as evil as them. And the fact that he has over half a billion dollars of net worth and luxurious homes in Italy and Miami, that tells you all you need to know. The guy is a scumbag. They will use human beings as human shields, civilians, men, women, children, old women, Babushka Z is a hostage to these Ukrainians so that they can score some sort of PR stunt. That's what's going on. And the civilians in the Azov style plant, maybe they're family members of those quote unquote resistance fighters, i.e. goons, thugs, losers. Maybe they are family members of them, but more likely than not, I bet that they're just regular civilians that the Azov style threatened and intimidated to go into that plant with them so that they could use them as bargaining chips, which is what they are doing now. Understand what's going on in Ukraine. This is what's going on. These are the kinds of people that the rest of the world has to deal with.